Hi, everybody. Welcome to All Things Aviation and Aerospace. I'm Vince Mickens. Looking forward to today's show. It's going to be a lot of fun. I uh, have some colleagues and friends that are on the show, uh, as well as a couple of people that I'm meeting for, or one that I'm meeting for the first time, I should say. Uh, and uh, it's, it's going to be cool because this is an area that we don't hear that much about, being a corporate flight attendant for business and private jet owners. Um, but it's something that is a, a great aspect of aviation. Uh, these guys really enjoy what they do with it. And I know a lot of people that have uh, even switched over from being like a commercial flight attendant, become a corporate flight attendant and, and find it a lot of fun. So being in this industry, I've seen a little bit of, of everything as some of my colleagues who I'm about to introduce, we've all kind of seen a lot in the world and uh, it's, it's some really good stuff. But it, if you like traveling and um, um, trying to multitask here, not good at it. If you like traveling and, and, uh, and, being, and having a lot of different experiences, I should put it that way, then being a corporate flight attendant would definitely be something that you want to look at because it's, uh, as I said before, it's just something that's, that's really a, a great uh, a career in, in our industry. So let me uh, start by welcoming our guests for today. First, I'd like to welcome back uh, Tamara Collum. Tamara is a retired Air Force One flight attendant. Yes, you heard me correct. That's in, that's in our president's airplane, Air Force One. She's been in the industry for 30 years. No, she doesn't look it. She's been flying for over 10,000 hours. Uh, and Tamara's duties uh, as an Air Force One flight attendant also included being a flight attendant instructor and evaluator. Since then, she retired and she's now she's mentoring and she's she's actually the director of etiquette and protocol training at the Da Vinci Flight in, in Flight Training Institute down in Florida. Uh, but she has also created Flight Ally, which is a mentorship program for corporate flight attendants um, that she you know wants to be able to give them some guidance on uh, how to navigate. Uh, in this industry. Tamara, welcome back to the show. Oh, thank you. It's always a pleasure. It's really wonderful to have you. Uh, we also have, uh, and I'd like to welcome back, Roxana um, from, actually, Rox Roxana is from Budapest, Romania. Roxana, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Vincent, and thank you for, uh, I'm very happy to be here again. It's great to have you. Roxana Mihai is uh, the Vice President of Women in Corporate Aviation. She's also the founder of Train Aviation based out there in Bucharest, Romania. It's great to have her live all the way from on the other side of the pond, as we like to say. She has been in the industry for 35 years. No, she doesn't look it either. Um, <laughs> both in commercial and business aviation, uh, being a flight attendant, and has over 25,000 hours in the air, she likes to put it. Um, including as an in-flight instructor, an auditor, and a recruiter. So, Roxana, we're looking forward to hearing about your experiences as well. Uh, and then to complete this juggernaut of a group, uh, we have John Detloff. And, John, I, did, I didn't ask you about pronouncing your name, but I'm going to assume I did that correct? You did a good job, yes. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> so, John is the Chief Operations Officer at the Da Vinci uh, in, da Vinci In-Flight Training Institute. He has over 30 years of training experience, including 20 years in business aviation. Um, prior to Da Vinci, John was the vice president of Air Culinary World, Worldwide. And before that, the director of in-flight services for the Miami Dolphins Victory Aviation. Another, one other quick note, John also was an executive chef in a number of uh, 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 areas and holds a culinary degree from the School of Culinary Arts. So John, you bring a wealth of information as well. Welcome again to the show. Thank you for having me, Vince, it's a pleasure. It's wonderful to have you. You know, um, to round this out, we also wanted to have someone that was relatively new in terms of being a corporate flight attendant uh, and, and could share a, a, a really interesting background that she has and how it came about we call her a newbie, you know, <laughs> she's probably like, well, newbie. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and go with that. But welcome, Nicole Samet. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And 
to be on a panel with so many fabulous peers. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. And Nicole, uh, Nicole's background, she uh, just wrapped up her, is wrapping up her first year as a mm -hmm. freelance contract corporate flight attendant. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So anyhow, it's really great to have you guys again and, and looking forward to this. Uh, you know, on a previous show a while back when we, we talked about being a corporate flight attendant and I had Tamara and Roxandra uh, and a few other guests, uh, we, at that time, uh, were talking about what type of things could be done to really help forward the industry and, and, and make it even better and make it more accessible, et cetera. And so they came up with what's called, they're calling a cabin crew member resource exchange workshop. And that is actually taking place in a couple of weeks. The actual name of it is Sea Crew 2023. I'm going to have you guys tell us where Sea Crew comes from. Um, and it'll be on uh, Monday, April 24th, and Tuesday, April 25th, down in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, it's a two day workshop that will cover things like what it's like to being uh, new in the industry. Nicole can tell us a little bit about that too. Um, and, and just what to expect and things of that nature. And along with that, they'll, they'll have a session covering the area of mentoring um, and, and the very specialized responsibility that corporate flight attendants have. Uh, they will also, um, uh, in terms of uh, business aviation in particular, they talk about catering and, and how that applies basically for all of the corporate flight attendant uh, duties. But um, how it really applies in business aviation and some of the things that, that uh, are expected with regard to the catering side of things. And then this is probably one that I know is, is dear to everyone, but particularly to Tamara's heart. And that is the professional networking etiquette and protocols for success and what that means and, and how important it is to, to help you be successful in the industry. So anyhow, without further ado, let me go ahead and, and get started with this. And, and I'll, I'll kind of open it up and, and I'll start it out. Why don't we talk a little bit about why you guys are now doing this workshop that's coming up for a couple of days and what your expectations are. And, and, and Tamara, I'll, I'll, I'll take it to you first. Oh, wow. Well, it all started with Roxana. Roxandra and us at base, we're realizing we haven't had a flight attendant conference for the last few years, partly because of COVID, but it's something we're missing, that connection, that networking opportunity. And in-flight crew connections offered their facility as a place where we could have our conference. So we put together a group of us and we started building this conference and started January. Actually, we met in December and started this in January. Yeah. Being a corporate flight attendant um, and, you know, you were a flight attendant on, on Air Force One, it's basically a service position. What is it that, that draws you guys to this particular career? And any of you can chime in on that. Well, I can say um, as, as a newbie, um, <laughs> <laughs> I love the opportunity to travel. I've always loved to travel. You meet the most amazing and interesting people along the way. Um, you get to kind of escape your family and your teenage children for a while. Oh, and <laughs> there's, there's one. <laughs> now there's an incentive to put on there, escape <laughs> children and uh, family. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and you get paid and you still come home. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> And you get to bring the kids back stuff from all over the world. Exactly. And it's a it's a unique experience being a corporate flight attendant. Um, like kind of Nicole said, you get to travel all around the world, but at the same time, our job duties, you know, of we take that very safe uh, seriously in um, safety, um, culinary training, service training, um, and you also get to learn about other culturals and other areas around the world to actually bring that back and enhance your skills being a corporate flight attendant mm -hmm. um, because it's not just flying around the world it's not just being a flight attendant you know don't forget you're also the maid you're the butler you're the chef um you're the personal assistant on board the aircraft as well and it doesn't really stop when you're just on the ground too that you actually have to go out and possibly get some things and 
always consider the asset of the principal, who, the owner of the aircraft, as well as their likes and dislikes. It's a it's an exciting field. Yeah. So, John, you you come from a culinary background, executive chef. How did all of that end up going for you to end up with Air Culinaire and now with the adventure? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I had got, a how much time do you have? Yeah. So <laughs> I, was, I was a chef for different restaurants, hotels. I'm also an EMT. And uh, I had a friend of mine who was a pilot and he was like, hey, I need a flight attendant for this flight. And I was like, I think I can do that. Thinking of, you know, Coke, peanuts, Coke, peanuts. I don't know. I've never been on a private airplane. And uh, I, my first pl- flight ever was on a BBJ, which is 737. And, that was your uh, very first flight? My very first flight. Okay, so and, for uh, people that don't know what that is, that's a Boeing business jet. That's a big jet. That's a big with jet. With only a few seats in it. It's ridiculous. But Correct. Right. So, so I became, um, they were like, here's the caterer number and i was like no i'm a chef i'll just make all the food so uh i made all the food and i figured hey there's a gig here and i became a flying chef for different celebrities and movie stars and flew around the world and then i had an opportunity to run a um, flight department down here in south florida for all their cabin services on that one time we had 17 aircraft and uh i was their cabin service uh director um for them for about 13 years wow Uh, and then uh but you know i got to travel the world meet a lot of different people um, you know, so it's an exciting field. I kind of got lucky. I get kind of the best of both worlds because when I was younger, I wanted to be a fighter pilot, um, but my eyesight was bad. So now I say I have the best of both worlds that I get to cook and fly at the same time. That's really cool. And I can relate to you about the flying, uh, wanting to be a fighter pilot. I wanted to be a naval aviator, but I wore glasses and, and back <laughs> then you that was me. <laughs> couldn't get the laser stuff so they didn't even have that back then that's that tell you how old i am but anyhow um so i can really relate to that you know um i know that our viewers and listeners are biting at the bit to want to know okay so what what does it take to be a corporate flight attendant and and you know you, you're talking about the workshop and you're talking about training da vinci is a in-flight training institute as is train aviation etc um, so let's talk about that for a bit and, and what their expectations are in terms of getting into this aspect of aviation. Well, would that, you like to uh, go first, Rosalinda, for, uh, I'm going to say yes. on the European aspect? Thank <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, thank you, John. Um, I think that a job is a job um, until it becomes a passion. At least it was in my case, because I was mm. really, really passionate about aviation and I really love this, this aviation industry. Um, and then everything comes naturally. So uh, being a corporate flight attendant is not easy. Like John said, it's an extremely demanding job. So it's an, exo- it's an exhausting job sometimes. Um, you can say that um, I cannot do it until you can do it because uh, we have so many hats in this job. Um, but uh, being a corporate flight, ad- uh, flight attendant, it's extremely challenging because you can use your qualities, your skills, and uh, you can use your creativity. You can put yourself in so many situations. And um, this is something very rewarding because it's not, um, uh, it is a demanding job, but uh, you never get bored about it. Because every day you meet new people, every day you are with um, somebody else in the aircraft. And, if you love aviation, that, that means that you love people because aviation is about people and for people. So um, I think that um, um, if you want to challenge yourself, then you have to keep educating yourself. I sure. always said that the key, the key to success is practically to keep educating yourself. So um, use your knowledge. If you don't have knowledge, then try to learn some knowledge from the others. Find a mentor or find somebody who can show you or who can teach you. Because the thing is that there are so many people around you that they'd want to help you. It's not just necessary just to ask somebody to help you. And there are so many opportunities. Um, in US, there are so many scholarships program, amazing scholarship program that that can you can use these scholarships in, or, <clears throat> I'm sorry, in order to to get a job, to apply for a job in corporate aviation. Um, but the thing is that you have to, to want this. Um, we decided to put together this um, 
CC crew event, um, which means practically the cabin crew member resource exchange uh, workshop. And our goal is to bring this event uh, in Europe, to make it international. Because um, in Europe, uh, we miss this event. We used to have a cabin service conference in Brussels every year. No, not anymore. So everybody uh, needs to connect. Everybody needs to engage with the others, to do some networking and to use this knowledge somehow. So we decided that, um, um, and I guess that connecting with others um, is, a, is a sense of being um, open and available to another person. Um, we do share the same aspiration and goals and each person feels valued, seen and heard. And I think this is very important. Yeah, so what, what is the, you mentioned challenges earlier. And by the way, I, I'm glad you brought up scholarships. I'm be happy to talk about that in a little more detail later, because I think that's an important thing that people need to know is out there and available for them to apply for. You were mentioning earlier that one of the aspects of being a corporate flight attendant are the challenges. And I was wondering if we could dig a little deeper into that. And when you say challenges, does it apply to, for example, having to deal with the, uh, the passengers and how some of them can, can be difficult to be nice about it uh, and things like that? Um, uh, what are some of the things we're talking about? Well, it's, it's everything. Because, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> First of all, I think that empathy is the most important thing and the most important skill that a flight attendant can have because and, and patience as well you uh, get in touch with so many different uh, guests with so many uh, different personalities and so different needs and um, you have to pay uh, a special attention attention to to details you have to um, develop the ability to adapt to any kind of situation in the aircraft to be an excellent organizer um, and a person with um, well-developed communication skills, an active listener, because you have to manage your time effectively, and um, to be able to do several things in the same time. And I always plan... say that you always have to be, this is a professional, this is, this is a professional. Exactly. Um, yes, and you always exactly. have to be calm and composed as well, um, because um, calm and being composed is critical in our role um, in a safety aspect as well as a service aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I was going to, uh, yeah, that's great that you brought that up, John, because the safety, a, a lot of people, they think of, of being a flight attendant, whether it's commercial or, or corporate, uh, that it's, it's really about serving people something to eat and drink and whatever mm -hmm. for the flight, and they don't realize all of it. So why don't we talk about that a little bit more about all of the other aspects of it that we don't always hear about, but play a, a really large role. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're, you know, the number one priority is safety of the aircraft. That is always our number one priority. Um, and therefore, you know, you have to be calm and composed and know your drills and how to, my main job is to protect the passengers, the asset of the mm -hmm. aircraft and my crew. So that is my number one priority. Now, a lot of times when we do think of private aviation is that we're flying around, we're drinking caviar and vodka and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and, you know, there is a lot of high class service levels on these aircrafts as well. Um, you know, I've done 13 course meals on aircraft, but I've also served, you know, White Castle burgers on aircraft as well. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, so it, it varies quite a bit in this industry of what, you know, that service level is going to be. And safety is always on your mind because it's, and you always have to be prepared for safety because it's not like, you know, it does, you know, knock on wood, it never happens because it's not like, oh, you know, we had a fire on the aircraft and we served s'mores, you know, you have to be, no, you have to know how to, if there is emergency on board that aircraft, how to deal with it and being calm and composed while dealing with that situation. And that's where um, training uh, schools like Da Vinci and Rosandra, Rasa you know, we take, we, that's where we really go in details of not only I'm going to say the service side, but as well as the emergency side. So therefore you're ready for every situation. So let me ask all of you this, because uh, John, again, you're giving me great segues. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was going to ask you guys, and, and it should be obvious, but what type of um, 
trainees come to your academies, your, 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 your training facilities in terms of what do you guys look for in terms of personality? Uh, and, you know, yes, they may love aviation or be interested in aviation, but what it is when you're selecting people or, or when people are applying for an opportunity to come to your academy, or they, they want to come there because they want to go through your training courses and things like that, what are the things you look for? Um, Nicole. <laughs> <That's pretty much. laughs> so, I mean, we, we want somebody who is, you know, a, a professional um, who is looking at this career as a professional, as a profession, not just I want to travel the world and I want to see the world. It is truly a profession. So, I mean, we definitely want to look at somebody that's going to be common composed in an emergency situation, as well as has some service and etiquette um, skills as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I but if I can add, so um, if I can kind of reiterate and amplify what John and Roxandra had said, um, like so, my background, like John, I was also an EMT, um, and I think that that critical thinking and um, grace under pressure is absolutely essential for working on an aircraft. First and foremost, safety is number one. But what most of the um, rest of the world sees is the glamour. So it's, you have to have that ability to think on your feet, the critical thinking, problem solving, um, communication. I'd say those are absolutely essential features and everything else you're able to learn through the training. You know, you can learn how to plate, you can learn how to um, deal with catering, which is definitely, definitely a class worth taking because there's so much to learn with, you know, the catering, the etiquette, but you have to come in with that professional attitude, the safety mentality. And I would say critical thinking and communication are some of the best attributes to bring into this job. So, Hey, they're bragging about you. Tell us a little bit more <laughs> about your background, Nicole. And, and, and you have an interesting one because you know, you didn't have goals years ago or, or even, you know, maybe that not that long ago to become a corporate flight attendant. So how did that come on your radar? What led up to that? <laughs> yes, um, as I was saying, my path was very circuitous. Um, I was a scientist. I was in the medical field. Um, I was actually, my education background is cytogenetics. And okay. I, yes, I... <laughs> So I worked in um, the medical field and then I worked in public health and I stayed home when my children were young and my husband has always been in aviation. So I have always been immersed in aviation through my marriage, through his career. Um, when I decided to get back into the workforce, it was a challenge to go back into the sciences. I had to do more training. Um, I didn't have the flexibility in my work field. So as any good story in Florida starts, I was out on a boat with some friends and I was complaining about the investment I had to make to go back into the sciences. And she looked at me and she said, why don't you go into aviation? You absolutely love aviation. And I looked at my husband, I said, oh yeah, I could do that. And literally a week later I was in safety training and started working, uh, a week after my, I graduated from FAPS. Wow. Yeah, I was very fortunate. And um, people think that I got jobs based on my connections in aviation because I had attended so many um, NBAA and base conferences. Networking in this industry is absolutely vital. It is such an investment in yourself to attend all of these networking and professional development um, events and courses. So definitely, if you are new and interested, sign up for crew um, so, and don't miss the other events. NBAA, all of the regionals base are fantastic. Absolutely. Tamara, um, you, you had a long career as a, as a flight attendant for Air Force One, which in itself is, is quite the accomplishment. <laughs> what yes. made you, as you transition and, and retired from the Air Force, say, you know, I want to continue doing this, but not only do I want to continue doing it, I also want to help others with it and further others in their career aspirations with regard to, to becoming a, a corporate flight attendant. Well, 
I know everyone could attest to this, but when you get into aviation, it's in your blood. You can even fence <laughs> agree that with is that. Very, that is very true. I, I can't even argue that one. Uh, and you you kind of get, it's it's almost like a drug. Agree. I, I, I see a lot of people leave and they're like, I miss it. It's mm-hmm. just something. I've seen people leave and come back. <laughs> and they want to yeah. come back. Um with that, I always knew I, w- I wanted to be a pilot, and but the best thing was I became a flight attendant, and I realized I can't sit that long anyway, so I'm right where <laughs> I need to be. <laughs> um, I love the training port part of it, and working with John and at Da Vinci has been fabulous. And with that, I realized even transitioning out, you are out there on your own. For flight attendants, we're out there on our own a lot. And so unless you start meeting people, and I started getting involved with the flight attendant committee before I retired, and that was very helpful for me get transitioning out and being able to start contracting. And contracting, you create a core, and then you guys start helping each other with finding, you know, contracting jobs. And I'm like, we need to have a mentorship. It's been on my mind for years that you got to have that lifeline, that one person you can call and ask that question that you might consider that stupid question. And it's no question is stupid. And that you can ask someone with that question and they might have that contact or that information to give to you. And yeah. so uh, one of my first mentees, I'd met her on the flight line. She was working the flight line, trying to break in and how Flight Ally came about was her and I working together when she first started um, breaking into the corporate world from the flight line in Fort Lauderdale. And so uh, I learned a lot from her as she was breaking in because it, it wasn't a path that I went on and I was a contract. So coming into the corporate world, everyone has a different path on how they got their first flight. No one ever came in the same way with their first flight. Sure. Like, oh, and you'll meet so many people. But this way, it's allowing an opportunity for us to all learn from each other. And someone might know someone that can help you out. Yeah. We talked about it a little I, earlier, but I'd like to open it back up to the floor and, and just talk about um, your C Crew 2023 that's coming up down in Charlotte, two day workshop. Tell us a little bit more uh, about that and what people can expect when they go, arrive and what they're going to learn for the next couple of days. So Andy. it's totally different than any typical conference we've had before. Um, it's all of, primarily it's networking, it's sharing information, but it's panelists. So you're going to have your basic and help us out. You're going to have training. You're going to have catering. You're going to have anything that is current in this that we're all dealing with on a regular basis are going to be topics. And we're going to have international topics. And Roxanne, we got caterers coming from Europe. And we got training topics. What about training issues coming up? Um, and it's really a, a great way to really kind of network more and because mm-hmm. continuing education is extremely important in this industry no matter um, being a corporate flight attendant you want to always continue to educate yourself even me um, as an instructor and you know as a CEO of Da Vinci I am always striving to continue to educate myself and a lot of times Education doesn't come just from a book or from, you know, thing. it's a lot of talk about with our fellow colleagues of what they're doing and what's new out there. Um, and that always enhances the career field as well. I agree with that. I definitely agree with what John said. This, this field is very dynamic. You learn from every flight, every aircraft, every owner, and you learn from every opportunity of networking. And what I've learned from John and Tamara and Roxandra, um, I've carried into my career this past year. And it's been very enlightening to, to work with such great professionals because they are so involved in the community. So anytime I'm at any kind of event, 
I can call one of them or ask, and there's always information on hand. Um, Tamara was one of the first mentors I had had in the industry, and um, what she said really resonated with me when I met her. She said, you mentor someone because you love what you do and you want to expand the career. You don't charge for it. You do it because you love what you do. And that really resonated with me. And I have been so grateful for all of the opportunity that I've had with them. So let me, let I think me that, go ahead. Uh, I think that success in business aviation comes down to motivation, mm -hmm. uh, determination, and the desire to grow. Because um, you can learn from everybody's experience every day. And like John said, we are um, in, uh, in contact every day with different people from uh, all over the world. And uh, also we are going and we get trained as well, even if we are trainers, because you learn something new, something that it's a tip that you didn't know. So you can learn this. And, uh, but you have to, to, to uh, have a, a desire to grow like a corporate flight attendant. Yeah, I was just going to uh, uh, kind of get down to a little bit nitty gritty that I think that our audience would want to know about. And, and that's a little bit more about some of the benefits of, uh, you know, in terms of uh, pay and things like that. And, and really some, some differences between um, in terms of the responsibility, not responsibilities, in terms of the, the work style, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, between being a corporate flight attendant for, for a flight department, a company flight department versus, you know, a charter or um, fractional operation or a, an owner operated aircraft and things like that. Can you just kind of talk about that and, you know, being a contract flight attendant versus being full time for somebody and things like that, which there's a variety of that in you guys uh, aspect of the industry. Mm -hmm. the when you are working, the sorry. <laughs> Please, Tamara. Oh, no, no, go first. Um, when you work, um, when you have a full contract and you work for an owner, let's say, it's easier in a way because you have the same, um, the same guests every day. You can learn and you can, um, you have a profiling of them. You know what they like, what they don't like. You know how they travel, um, what they eat, uh, if they have any, um, allergies to some food or something. So you have uh, an agenda with a profile of any passenger that you have on board. And um, it's, you are flying on the same aircraft, let's say. When you are a freelancer, it's different. It's more challenging because you fly today on an aircraft, tomorrow on another an aircraft. You don't know who the guests are. You have to adapt yourself to, the, to this new guest. And you have to improve your, your skills in, in this flight, during a flight, practically. And this is uh, more challenging, in my opinion, because you can use your creativity and your, your, all your skills to do that. Go ahead. Whoever else was going to chime in. Go ahead, Nicole. Okay, so um, for your, you asked about pay rates. And as a contractor, it varies throughout the country. Um, I've heard the West Coast and up in the Northeast get paid a little bit higher than we do. I'm in uh, South Florida. Um, but from my rates with, and being new this first year, I'm sure you know there, there are people with more experience that can charge more. I've been um, between 600 to $900 a day. Um, and I learned that 600 is really below industry standard right now. So about 750 to 900 is what I'm hearing for Florida. Now, obviously, like out west, um, you know, they can be 900 to 1100 a day. And that has changed quite a bit due yes. to, I'm going to say, COVID. Before COVID, Nicole's totally correct. You were getting $600 a day, 650 a day. That was kind of the going rate. Ever since COVID happened, the industry has expanded so much and has grown so much that the daily rates have gone up to like $900, $1,000 $1, today, 1100 but also determines on your qualifications, you know, so even like for me, like when I exactly. fly as a chef and they're not ordering catering and as Nicole and I are like EMTs, I charge a little bit more than average, you know, so, but it also determines on the clientele 
and who you're flying for. I was so. going to say, and, and, and on that note, go, go ahead. Somebody was getting ready. I to was going to say, and then if you're going through one of the management companies, say mm -hmm. um, in-flight crew connections, jet professional or jet aviation professionals, sometimes um, there are flight departments that have a set rate. And so mm -hmm. if you fly for them, they don't, you have to go with that set rate. So yeah. sometimes you don't have a choice. And in Europe, it's even lower. You, we are doing the same job as a corporate flight attendant. We are flying on the same aircraft, let's say, but mm -hmm. the pay is less. So we get paid less than uh, than the United States and less than uh, in in the Middle East, yeah. in Europe. I was going to ask you guys, and this is this is a question that could have a, a several different answers, but um, relationship with the people that you fly for, the company, uh, does that also affect what rate you might? be paid and in terms of loyalty like oh he brought up a really touchy one <laughs> in, ter in, ter in terms of loyalty in terms because of loyalty they... availability I, I you know I, I i i know it applies to pilots to some degree where if mm -hmm. you know if somebody if you're on somebody's um uh account as a contract pilot mm -hmm. and and Every time they call you, you're not always available or you have an excuse exactly. or a reason not to. Um, and I don't know if that affects the pay or if it's just they stop calling you. <laughs> so, yeah. it's, it's they true. stop calling you. <laughs> yeah. it, it works both ways. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's I, I just I, I was I was really bringing that up, not to put you guys on the spot about it specifically, but the importance of, of something, Tamara, that you talk a lot about. And that's the professional etiquette <laughs> and the protocol mm -hmm. in terms of how you deal with all aspects of your responsibilities, not only with your passengers, but the company the that you work for or individual that you work for, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, um, because you could be on the other side. If you've already accepted the job and it's a one day job and then you get an opportunity to do 10 days, and then you cancel on the one day, you all start losing those contracts. Great example. I if I accept a one day, I'm taking the one day and I, but I'll reconfirm it and I'll let them know because a lot of times they'll cancel, but I let them know is if, if this trip is confirmed and because I was offered another trip, but then I won't take the 10 day if that one day is confirmed to show that I am loyal and that, because they'll get other trips and then they might have a 10 day trip down the line for me. But and that happens frequently. If it cancels, so. You know, I was at a, a show uh, with you, um, Tamara, and I remember we walked in, I forget what aircraft it was, but the first thing you did is you wanted to see the layout of the galley. Um, right. <laughs> you, you consider that something really important. So I bring that up and I, and I, I, I give it a, a segue chance for you, John, to talk about the importance and, and that aspect of, of flying in terms of the catering and how that applies to different passengers taste um, and different requirements, whether they're large or small and things like that. Yeah, I mean, every aircraft's a little bit different. I'm going to say galley, you know, like I said, our number one priority is safety, but you know, most of the time we are cooking and plating and stuff like that. And and trust me, I've seen thousands of different galleys. I've been on BBJs and I think whoever designed it was like, oh, yeah, they got to eat. Let's fill, put a galley in the closet, you know. <laughs> and, all, and then I've been on other airplanes that have a really nice galley, you know. And most corporate airplanes are going to say like, you know, Gulfstreams and Globals and, you know, and Falcons. They, you know, most of their galleys are pretty standard to a certain point of size wise um when you get in the bigger airplane the galleys can get bigger or smaller it all depends um but having the proper galley i think we i think the industry has changed quite a bit and i'm going to say in the past 10 15 years that they are considering you know of our job duties of what we're doing mm -hmm. and trying to make it better in the galley for us of even having refrigeration <laughs> you know having an oven yep. and a microwave um, and ca because catering is such an important part of the aircraft and that's even, you know, as a flight attendant, our main job is safety, but we do a lot of service. I always tell everybody, you can have the brand new aircraft, you know, everything, everything's gold. 
but your service level was horrible and the food was horrible, your whole flight's horrible. You know, you can have a rundown airplane and torn seats and everything like that, but your service levels were high and the food was uh, great quality. Yeah. That's what they're going to remember. That's you a know, really so. great point. Yeah, that, that's really, that's a great point to bring up. It, it brings a couple questions to mind. And one is the, on the technical side. Now that aircraft, uh, most of them have, some pretty sophisticated technology. How much does that come into play with you guys training uh, somebody to become a corporate flight attendant and knowing how to reset the, the Wi-Fi as an example, which all joking aside, I've heard about from, from some major corporate flight departments about around the world trips that could go perfect from a safety and convenience standpoint, but let them lose the Wi-Fi for 20 or 30 minutes. And that's all oh, I get about. Yeah. <laughs> Connectivity is extremely important nowadays. And, you know, there's many companies that deal with that and they do have like training on that. Um, but that is an important factor of our jobs as well, of knowing how to reset things and how how that equipment works on that aircraft as well. Um, so I think it's very important. I'm sure, you know, Tamara and Nicole and everybody can speak a little bit more to that, that especially the, the way it's changing. And a lot of the times, you know, it's how you relate with your customers, your clientele, and the crew. You and if you don't understand something, you learn about something, and it's just perception is everything. It's how you're relating to it. Yeah. Instead of just saying no, <laughs> too bad. We never like the word no. Yeah. Kinds of ways well, and, and, and that no. brings up an important right. point too, and that's the relationship between the the flight attendant and the the crew, the the pilots, um, and how how well you guys communicate and interact with each other as it relates to the flight and the passengers. You should treat them as uh, as, as you treat your passengers. So uh, you have to be professional all the way, and um, it how's the the relation grows between the pilots and and the crew because we are practically in their hands. They are professionals, we are safe. And the guests are in our hands. We are professional, they are safe. <laughs> so I think all the, the, all the airlines want to hire um, a corporate flight attendant that fits the, profiles, uh, the, the profile of the customers, they care, they put carries, and uh, the moral val values it promotes, right? Because um, we are like a trademark because our smile is our logo, our personality is our business card. And the way you leave others feeling of, um, after having an experience with you becomes your trademark. So if your brand is the feeling you leave on people, then you need to use other tools to help them stay with a great personal brand impression because it's very hard to do a second good first impression. So I think that your personal brand should reveal who you are as an individual who is uh, empathetic first and very approachable. And um, I think that's why we need to learn how to use um, our skills, our work experience, our expertise, and especially our personality to get the job that uh, we all are dreaming of. Yeah, Roxana, let me ask you the same question I asked Tamara. How did your career evolve? How did you, where did you start and how did you get to where you are now? You, you know, you're, you, now you're, you're very, you're very much an advocate for the, for the career and the industry. You're vice president of the Women in Corporate Aviation Association uh, and all the other things that you're involved in, including this upcoming Sea Crew 2023. Well, I started my aviation career uh, back in 1988. Um, it was um, aviation in, in the 80s was a very glamorous, uh, a very glamorous thing. It was a very exclusive um, industry. And um, I started doing it in Bucharest and uh, I started flying for the nation carrier of Romania. And um, it was very, very um, hard to get in this industry. Um, at that time, the national carrier of Romania was the biggest um, airline uh, in Southern uh, Europe. And um, um, it was quite very hard to get in. I remember that um, I had we had like 2,500 people interested to get in this company at that time. And uh, 
only 50 of us were successful. So I started- Five, like, zero I out of 2,500? Five, zero, yes. Wow. But this was in 1988. And the training that we get was for one year and a half, not two months or two weeks, how they do it right now. One year and a half of training, continuous training, med uh, medical training, um, um, you name it. And uh, I really love it from the first time I get in the, in, the, in the aircraft, I really love flying. And during the years, I realized that I want to do more, not just flying, not just being a, a simple flight attendant. So that's why I decided to become an instructor. Um, I, um, I decided to work uh, and to, to um, train customer service in the company. And then I become a recruiter. And then I switched to corporate aviation. Well, I had the privilege to fly with all the presidents of Romania since 1992 till 2017. I flew for one president of uh, Africa. I've been in Africa. Uh, and um, that was a challenge that time, 20 years ago, to fly corporate in Africa, a remote, a remote location. That was a very, a very big challenge for us. Why did you pick corporate? Why, why did you decide you wanted to go corporate from commercial? Um, I think because uh, I was sure that I have the skills to do it. And I really love to teach the others to do it. And um, it's a very different uh, type of approach of the clients. More sophisticated because of their, um, we used to have a state, um, head of state like passenger. So you need another approach of the passenger. You need to have these skills, to have this knowledge to do that. And it's very different and um, I really love it. And uh, then uh, over the years, I realized that I can do more. And I realized that I can train the others and to make them love this aviation. And um, I was um, involved in all the associations in Europe and uh, uh, abroad. I was a member of Women in Corporate Aviation first, before being elected as a vice president. And um, I had the honor and the privilege to be um, um, working in this uh, organization since uh, 2019. And it's my second family, I can tell you. Yeah. And I yeah. learned a lot during these years from, from these people in uh, Women in Corporate Aviation Organization. I learned a lot, really. And I respect them. And I'm very happy that I can mentor the others. So I'm very happy that we can mentor the, the next generation of aviation professionals. Absolutely. Because it, the thing is to give back to the community what you've learned and to give it with your both hands and your full soul and if you're passionate about this you can do it so i i like to say that uh, do what you love and love what you do and if you want it you're half there so don't give up always there there to do more sure Tamara, let me just ask you real quick uh was it competitive to become a flight attendant for air force one was that was that kind of a competitive thing also um no so um there's other squadrons per se like all your blue and whites on uh you'll see on tv the gulf streams yeah and the vip that, transport right that will fly congressmen um four stars and stuff so i was flying on those aircraft i started out in hawaii on a 707 flying the um sink packs the pacific side of it and you apply for it and it, you qualify and get hired but it's your reputation that follows you that they'll ask you to come up and fly with it based on your reputation and networking, knowing, working with those other flight attendants and they know your job ethics. Kind of like even in the corporate world, Air Force One is a workhorse. So when they, you're, you work the 40 hours, when that plane takes off and meals being served, whether it's a 20 minute flight or an eight hour flight, and it's served 80 to 100 people. Yeah. So yeah. she's a workhorse, but it taught me a lot. Of, it gave me a lot of experience that when I got into the corporate world and I got my catering meal or I got something different or in the as contractor, it is like Roxanne was saying, it's challenging. I love that challenge. 
because I can get on there and I think outside the box, what do I do with this? Or I call John and go, this is what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so listen, I, I, as we, we, we have about nine minutes or so left and as we wrap up, I, I, there's two things I want to do. And one of them is kind of fun. I'm, I'm going to put this out there to you guys and see if anybody has anything fun to share. And that is any story that stands out to you or experience that you just like to share with us that was, you know, it was funny, it was different, it was interesting, or whatever the case may be. There's the so many. in your court. <laughs> There's so many. You know, I would like to add something real fast. Um, I always say, and I learned this from my instructors, something about being a flight attendant, no one understands our job or what we do until they walk in our shoes one day. So we exactly. can... That is so true. Until you walk in our shoes, no one understands what we're doing every day because we wear so many different hats. I think that being a flight attendant, it's so much more than just a job uh, because it changes your whole world. It's practically a lifestyle and you get addicted to it. And um, if you focus on the load of experiences you get through this way of life, it's a real privilege to be a flight attendant. And I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> you know, you guys are really good at what you do because you're really smooth. Everybody has glossed over my little question. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think describe <laughs> and just, our industry just, is very you know, discretionary. Yeah, yeah. You, but you know what? Discretionary is what your industry is, and, yeah. and you guys are demonstrating that you get that very well. I mean, I, I think well, all of us probably have thousands of stories and seen things and heard things and, and uh on flights and uh even on the road um but like i said this industry is a profession um and i think exactly. we all take that very seriously um to that that yes we have seen things and we i could probably tell you on the side of a thousand different stories <laughs> but at the same time it is very uh we have to kind of keep that professionalism that we're, we're not going to go to TMZ and state different uh, exactly. things of different clientele <laughs> and, and all that. <laughs> no, that no, that's that's absolutely fair. And and you know, and even social I wasn't media asking right you to now. put anybody or anything on the spot. I am a journalist, so I was I was like, well, I got to ask. But uh, <laughs> no, seriously though, I think um, both Tamara and Roxana touched on the last thing that I wanted to do, and just just get some final thoughts from you guys as to your advice to those who are interested in coming in this industry, whether it's somebody that's in high school or college thinking about it, or whether somebody who, you know, had another career before, like Nicole, a couple of things before, and then said, you know, this is something that I wanted to do that I never really thought about doing, which by the way, aviation seems to be of interest to most people one way or another. But a lot of people mm -hmm. have never thought about what they could do or, or, you know, and how they could enter into the industry. And so here's a path or here's a here's an opportunity um, that hopefully a lot of the people that are watching would say, oh, you know, I never really thought about that. That actually might be something really good. And John, I love your emphasis and actually all of you emphasizing it is a profession. It is something that uh, that you take very seriously that you have a passion for, but you also understand the importance of. It's, and I like that it's definitely going to be an investment and not just a monetary one. If it's something mm -hmm. you really want, you're going to have to hit the ground running. And like Nicole hit on, you're going to have to attend those professional development courses, the training, the additional training, whether culinary, um, any other type of etiquette, your emergency training and get a mentor. It, it doesn't have to be through, find your mentor, find your contacts and get into the coffee meetups and get out there and meet people and learn about it because that's the only way you're gonna get it. I've met flight attendants who broke in who didn't have any background in services and they joined, they went to a restaurant and worked there to get some type of training. So they would be looked at. And then they went and worked in the kitchen so they could learn there. So if it's something you want, you'll find a way to get that experience. And I'd like to say, um, I, think, oh, I was going to just say <laughs> that um, aviation is a very, very 
vast and large industry. There's a huge expanse of what aviation covers. However, it's also a very small industry in that you will see the same faces again and again at, at different events, different companies. That is um, so and true. It's, yes, it is so <laughs> true because as you said earlier, aviation, it gets into your blood. It gets, it's like a drug. And even people that are in one aspect or one aspect of aviation um, can stay in aviation in an entirely different field in the industry. Um, so I would say to get started, dip your toes in any aspect of aviation, whether that's going to an FBO and especially if you're younger in high school, um, you know, see if you can get a job at FBO or work on the line and get a little bit of an introduction into the industry. And going from there, you know, attend one of the trainings. There are so many amazing trainings. Like Da Vinci has a fantastic training. You know, facts, flight safety, um, do the research to make sure you have, you know, a training that's going to be accepted and network because you will see the same faces again and again, invest in yourself, in your education and in your networking experiences, play yeah. the long game. Uh, and if, if well, you don't Rupert, have the money ahead, to Roxanne, do it, I think you wanted to say something. Uh, if you don't have the money to do it, join different organizations as the Women in Corporate Aviation, Women in Aviation, Aviation International. Uh, apply for a scholarship and do something for yourself. Uh, because if you don't dare, if you, if you don't have the courage to do something to evolve, you are, nobody will come to your door, knocking on the door and telling, hey, I have a job for you. Mm -hmm. Because the flight attendant job um, offers a freedom of movement and financial independence that it's hard to overlook. And I encourage everybody to try. But most people say that they want something, but they aren't willing to make the sacrifices and the commitments to make the dream possible. So I advise them to dare. And um, we are there for them. Just ask and um, we are here. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I, um, that's really important about being involved with organizations like Women in Aviation International, Women in Corporate Aviation, um, and, and even some of the other organizations that may be more specific to other parts of it. And Nicole, thank you for bringing up the overall aspect that there's a lot of opportunity in aviation, really regardless of what your interest is, there's a, there's a place for it. If you, if you like the aviation environment, then there's a place for you no matter what you want to do. Even design, kind of interiors. There's there's an aspect in yeah. aviation for e everyone. Exactly. As, as we kind of wrap things up, though, I wanted to um, real quick talk about um, each of the, the different training institutes. So we can start with um, uh, Train Aviation over in, in Romania and in Europe uh, and what that's about. Tell us a little bit about that and what you guys offer there. Uh, at your at your institute. Well, Train Aviation uh, is the only business aviation agency in Romania, uh, founded in 2015, that is um, offering uh, professional training sessions and recruitment for future flight attendants in business and commercial aviation, without any requirements of uh, previous aviation experience. Any person who is over um, 18 years old, and know English at least an intermediate level and wants to work in a completely different uh, dynamic but uh, challenging and rewarding field can participate to our trainings. So we have a range of courses for uh, flight attendants, uh, starting with the one for commercial aviation and uh, our brand uh, course training, let's say it's uh, the VIP corporate etiquette and civil service. Um, and uh, it's an extremely elaborate course um, in line with, with the, the current business aviation standards and um, uh, market requirements. It's a hands-on training. Um, and um, we do also uh, recruitment events for uh, commercial airlines and for business aviation airlines also. Um, and uh, customer tailored customer service trainings for, uh, for airlines. Um, the training program is supported by me personally, and um, I have another internationally certified trainer with long experience in uh, business aviation and commercial aviation. And um, um, we have, and we are in constant, we are in um, 
constantly participate to international events, um, conferences, and um, to be or to offer the, to the trainees the latest news and innovation in the industry. Okay, thank you for that. And John, how about telling us about Da Vinci? So Da Vinci uh, in Flight Training Institute was encephalized to be that all-inclusive school that we do culinary training, service training, as well as emergency training. So um, we were probably one of the leaders, I'm going to say, when it comes to culinary and service training. Um, we trained some of the top, uh, um, some of the military, as well as some of the top Fortune 500 companies out there, um, as well as our emergency training that uh, we launched a year and a half ago. Um, that were uh, recognized by EJM, Jet Edge, and other Fortune 500 companies, and that is growing. Um, so we are, I'm going to say, a company that is all-inclusive in a way of culinary service and emergency training. And if I would tell anybody, I'm very honest, you know, even emergency training, you know, there's a couple top schools out there. Um, and I consider Da Vinci one of them, such as uh, Nicole brought up FACT. She went to FACT, which is a great school, flight safety, um, da Vinci, you um, you want to make sure you do your homework when it comes to training um, for your career of, of making sure that, you know, you're you're going to the school that's going to offer you the best to get the position that you're going after. Um, and that, that is crucial no matter what. And at the same time, you can go to one school one year and then go to the other school the next year because that's even part of continuing education in a way because you're always going to learn a little bit from everybody as well. Um, so, and I always tell students, you know, go see the school, go talk to people that have been there um, to really get before, because Tamara and Nicole and every, it is an investment. It yeah. is quite expensive right. and you want to make sure you do your homework um, correctly and get the right training that you do need. So and let's go. Well, I'm sorry. When you have the right training, it opens doors. Sure, absolutely. Let's recap, re recap as we um, wrap this up uh, about C Crew 2023 down in Charlotte. Um, if somebody wants to register for the two day workshop that takes place on April 24th and 25th, which is uh, just uh, a few weeks away, um, what what's the uh, contact and procedure for that? So the cost is tuned in. And forty nine dollars, and it's ccrew. dot exchange where you can register online. And yep. right now, um, CFA under Scott Arnold is. If you go on Facebook and say yes under that, he's doing a drawing on Saturday, and then Flight Ally is going to do a drawing on Monday to give away a free ticket. Okay. And you guys all a, a free ticket at the conference, not an airline yes. ticket. <laughs> right. Free ticket only. <laughs> <laughs> you want to specify that. Um yes. and, and if um and you guys also have uh hotels and other information that people can find out about. Uh, yes, everything's on the right. website. Gotcha. And the website and also, I is, that I was gonna say, um, especially for some girls or, or guys that are starting out and maybe are a little more budget conscious after paying for training. Um the registration does include breakfast, lunch, and transportation from the hotels, doesn't it, Tamara? Yes, it does. Thank yes, you for bringing that up. So we do have buses that will take transportation that's going to take you. We have continental breakfast, we have lunch, and then the first evening we have a, an, an event at Penn's Mechanical for a networking event that will provide a dinner. Great. Any closing comments, uh, last, last words from anybody as we, uh, as we say good day? Nope. To be professional, get, get professional training. I think this is very important. And uh, we wrap up everything with that. So we are professional till the end. And if you want to be a professional, then get professional training. And uh, get professional training from people with the expertise and with years of experience in, the, in, in industry. Because this is very important. Well, in the words of Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC, I'll let that be the last word. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just couldn't help that. Uh, listen, thank you everyone for taking the time and being available to talk about this and talk about this aspect of the industry, this career field, uh, and, and really how important it is, um, how, how it can be uh, a great experience for those who are interested um, all the way around, and, uh, and then the opportunities to, to learn more about it, to learn where you can get training for it 
and how you can get into the industry. Uh, I, I think you guys shared some very valuable information. I totally appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you thank for you having, so having us for the invitation. Thank, thank you, you, Vincent, for having us. Absolutely. So that is uh, a wrap for us on this. And I, I think, um, you know, and I'm going to go to my note here. <laughs> Uh, where did I do with it? Um, as always, my goal with this show is to share aviation career possibilities along with the opportunities that are available to those wanting to pursue a career in aviation and aerospace, but are not sure where to start or what may apply to your skill set. If you go to Private Air Media on YouTube, you'll find the entire library of shows covering a plethora of aviation and aerospace career options. I'd like to thank everyone for joining another great conversation and hope that this show was helpful for your interest in the aviation industry. As always, and as with every show, this show is for any and everyone who has an interest in any and every aspect of aviation and aerospace. All Things Aviation and Aerospace is a presentation of Private Air Media. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Until next time, please take care, stay safe, safe flying if you're a pilot, and blue skies for all of us. All the best and have a good one.